Tonight on Canyons News, posters of kidnapped Israelis are being taken down around the Santa Cruz Valley and here at COC. Then we go behind the scenes of a local artist telling his story with two art forms. And with the PGA Tour qualifying in full swing, golfers are trying to secure their spot. Canyons News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Hello everyone and welcome to Canyons News. I'm Katherine Breck and here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. We begin tonight with breaking news. A deadly shooting took place at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas today. Las Vegas police have confirmed four fatalities, including the suspect. The shooting began around 11.45 a.m. and ended when police saw say they engaged the suspect, resulting in the suspect's death. Authorities have not confirmed the identity of the suspect or the victims. This comes after a similar tragedy took place at Morgan State University in Baltimore only two months ago. You may have noticed city buses back on the street as the driver's strike with MV Transportation has come to an end. After more than 50 days, the bus drivers union voted in favor of a new four-year contract on Sunday. The union says that the new contract offers a significant increase in pay and protected health coverage. The union went on strike in early October, suspending bus services after negotiating for more than a year. The city says that all routes have returned to pre-strike service levels. Posters of kidnapped Israeli people in the Gaza Strip have been taken down out of random. Kenyan's news reporter Christopher Casey takes a closer look at what may be happening. The walls at CSC are usually covered in posters, advertising an event, clubs, or even messages for students. But there is one poster that keeps getting taken down, and that being pictures of kidnapped Israelis. With the ceasefire over and the war between Israel and Hamas resuming, adding on with the rise of anti-Semitism was showing no signs of slowing, these posters have been put up in many communities, college campuses, and right here in Santa Clarita Valley have also been getting taken down. One local is saying enough is enough. What I have done to get them to do something is I am encouraging them to sign a, a resolution or a statement which was prepared by an organization called Universities United Against Terrorism. Over 100 colleges have signed this statement and it basically asked people to support Israel against Hamas so that Israel and Palestinian people can live in peace. With this being the case, many people in SEV have seen or experienced anti-Semitism, but there are those in the community looking to offer support. I have Beth Shalom in Saugus. For example, we have therapists that are, are, are working hard and diligent to work with students that might have been traumatized uh, for uh, experiencing anti-Semitism. Obviously, our staff is here and available. While it is not known if it is COC students or third parties taking down the posters, the question still stands as what COC's stance is on the war. As a learning community that's committed to knowledge, education, and diversity, um, I think you know, we're devastated by, by the violence in the Middle East. Um, the shock and trauma uh, of the ongoing war can absolutely affect students and, and employees um, and, um, you know, and, and friends and neighbors here in, in the Santa Clarita community. If you do see any form of the face posters with messages or any hurtful actions against others at COC, please go to the Campus Life Office or Campus Security Office to report it. For Canyons News, I'm Christopher Casey. In an update to this story, two more flyers were removed in Bonelli Hall and at the base of Seiko Hall in the past 24 hours. It's a story of David versus Goliath two local business owners, and a struggle with what they say is a decades-old city code and a faulty alarm. Canyons reporter Lauren Hanna tells us more. I feel like I want to give up, you know, but this is my family business. I can't. When a system designed to protect your investments causes your restaurant to lose money. The bill came out. $10,000 and they want me to pay for it. That's how much the city of Santa Clarita is charging Julie Ngomrum and her son Mike for false alarm calls made by a system they say is faulty. These documents show a history of responses made to Crazy Hot Chicken in Canyon Country. 
and now the city wants the owners to pay up. We hardly have any customers. It's really bad right now. I try so hard to, to make it happen, but, you know, we're still underwater. It's all part of a 25-year-long effort by the city of Santa Clarita to reduce the number of times law enforcement responds to false burglar alarms. These documents state the city wants to recoup the cost of the responses. My mom's been stressing out. She's been losing sleep. And she's just been up, like, trying to, like, figure out how to get this done. When the duo bought the restaurant, the alarm company, ADT, told them the already installed security system was still good to use. Turns out this wasn't the case. In the past year, the sheriff's department responded to 16 false calls triggered by their faulty alarm. We're seeing technology from maybe the early 2000s in play here, and they said it was working, but it was completely faulty, causing all these problems. Problems that Ngamrums say ADT is not willing to fix. They're billing us for their faulty equipment, and they expect us to fix their faulty equipment when we have zero knowledge of it. But the Ungam rooms haven't lost all hope. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Mike from Crazy Hot Chicken. They've turned to social media to ask the community for help. They'll bill you the $10,000 and just be like, well, I'm sorry you got robbed, but we're ADT. This is our form of security. My son, you know, he's a younger generation. He know how to put on social media. That's why he put it out and a lot of people like, you know, saw that and they feel sorry for us. The mother and son want ADT to fix the system and for the city to reevaluate their program. We reached out to ADT but did not get a response. She came here, had the American dream, and now this billion dollar company is just trying to crush it. Now the owners say they haven't found a path forward yet, but that doesn't mean they plan to give up anytime soon. Reporting in Santa Clarita, I'm Lauren Hanna. Driving around Santa Clarita, you'll see a lot of dry brush, and there's always a chance a small spark can set off a large disaster. Canyons News field reporter Kyle Kawamoto shows us what's being done to keep the area safe. If you heard or seen this plane, at that time of year, fire season where the brush is dry and the danger is high. The risk of wildfires will grow, especially given the increase in vegetation following a wet winter, spring, and even this summer. This vegetation will be dried out and become explosive fuel following periods of hot and dry North Santa Ana winds that will contribute to rapid wildfire spread. According to the CAL FIRE website, 7,477 wildland fires have occurred this year. There is a cause for the danger to ignite. So we've had a couple of seasons back to back where we've had extra rain that we normally have. So there is a lot of brush out there. So if the winds blow hard enough and it gets hot enough, some of that fuel will dry out, especially the light flashy fuels like the grass and whatnot. While the firefighters can fight from the ground, they have another set of weapons to combat on a different battleground. Just as a point of reference, Helitanker 55 delivers up to 3,000 gallons of water, gel, or retardant both day and night. Each super scooper behind me delivers up to 1,620 gallons of water or foam. And the Firehawk that we have, the Sikorsky Firehawk, delivers up to 1,000 gallons of water. No matter what time of the day it is, in case of an evacuation, it's always best to be prepared. Just as bringing a spare set of clothes, food and water, and most of all, your important documents. We encourage everyone to be ready by paying attention to the high fire danger days, and we urge everyone to learn about how to protect your families and homes by developing a personalized, ready, set, go wildfire action plan. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Kyle Kalman. A mysterious canine respiratory disease is spreading rapidly in LA County, causing concern for the Castaic Animal Shelter as they face an influx of dogs in need of homes. <coughs> Kennels crowded with more animals coming in and being adopted. The Castaic Animal Shelter is working to keep their animals healthy amidst a new disease. That's a good dog. So we've had, um, over the past few weeks, a lot of upper respiratory infections. This, however, is not the traditional kennel cough most are used to. 
A recent respiratory outbreak spreading across Los Angeles County is causing concern for the Castaic Animal Shelter and for pet owners alike, as the cause or cure are not known. The LA County Department of Public Health's Veterinary Public Health Program are cautioning owners to stay alert for symptoms of cough, runny nose, sneezing, and lack of energy for an atypical canine infectious respiratory disease. Several animals are currently being treated at the shelter for upper respiratory infections, but due to the close proximity of pets and visitors, respiratory infections like this spread rapidly. The dogs immediately are put on antibiotics and they're also confined to their cages because it is highly contagious. While those treated at the shelter are showing signs of improvement, veterinarians report having to euthanize several pets due to the disease. And a lot of people you know, aren't taking their dogs to dog parks right now or not taking their dogs to the groomers. People are being very proactive about keeping it from getting, you know, getting their own dogs sick. To help minimize the spread, it's important to keep your dogs away from public spaces, vaccinate, and report any symptoms to your veterinarian. For Canyons News, I'm Katherine Brooke. With holidays around the corner, many people will be together with their families. However, that may not always be a good thing. Canyons News reporter Evan Evora shows us more. Over the holidays, most people might stress over buying presents or just that right toy. However, some families are in need of a different type of gift, the gift of a safe place. Here at the Family and Child Center, they provide a large range of services for those in need. So we have our mental outpatient mental health program, uh, our family preservation program, domestic violence, substance use, and early childhood mental health. So unfortunately, those contracts do not cover all of our costs. Uh, that are required to operate our programs. And while this company doesn't do it for the numbers. It's the kids. So we're really serving the children first, but then with that, we're supporting the families too. So during the pandemic, we found that we were unable to do our regular fundraising activities that were in person. So we had to come up with a, a unique way that would help um, honor the heroes in people's lives. You know, someone that had uh, transitioned to a wedding anniversary, uh, to anyone who, we have a couple of people up here uh, who honored their pets that had been lost. Um, you know, anything that you see up here. And our goal is to really, to fill these walls up and if we have to, and uh, move it over into the education building too. For those looking to help the Child and Family Center, they always have fundraisers and events for anyone to help. A couple fundraisers that we do every single year. One is Taste of the Town, and this coming year in uh, May of 2024, we'll be holding our 35th annual, uh, minus the pandemic, <laughs> uh, Taste of the Town event. So that's one, that's our biggest fundraiser. For more information about fundraisers or more, you can visit childfamilycenter.org. For Canyons News, I'm Evan Avora. Next, we turn to Lucas Harris with an in-depth look at some of the important news happening around the globe and in the Santa Clarita Valley. So Lucas, tell us what's trending. Thank you, Catherine. And here's a look at the news you need to know. Legislation meant to send military aid to both Ukraine and Israel was on the edge of collapsing after a briefing turned into a hostile argument just the night before a critical test vote in the Senate. This meltdown, which took place the night before the vote in the Senate, involving a $110.5 billion emergency spending bill, heavily implying that not only this measure will fail, but took away any hope of a bipartisan agreement anytime soon. As for news in the U.S., in Arlington, Virginia, a 56-year-old resident, James Yu, was in the center of a massive house explosion on Monday night and is presumed dead. Officials say they are still investigating the cause of this shocking explosion, which rocked Arlington's Blue Mountain neighborhood. As for the scene itself, human remains were discovered at the scene, and the office of the chief medical examiner is expected to work to discover the cause and manner of death. Outside of Yu's presumed death, only minor injuries were reported at the scene. Now, looking at local news. Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station detectives are asking the public on any information on a report regarding gunshots in Valverde Saturday morning. According to station officials, no one is reported to be hit by the alleged gunfire. 
but deputies responded to a house in the 30,300 block on San Martinez Road after multiple reports of gunfire at approximately 2 a.m. A man was reported wearing a black hoodie and blue jeans running away from the area shortly after the incident, according to witnesses. If you have information regarding this incident, please contact the SCV Sheriff's Station at 661-260-4000. And that's what's trending. I'm Lucas Harris. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at canyonsnews.com. Now back to Catherine at the Canyons News Desk. A Santa Clarita man known for his picturesque captures is telling stories in a different way. Austin Dave sheds light on how life's experiences allow two passions to collide. The wine, the life, the mind, the time, the bell, the chair, the end, the hell. Music transcends into so many different things. Trying to wake up, yo, we know is what it seemed. Creativity is the lifeblood of any artist. And I hear a sound, I hear something, and I think. I want to fuse these styles together, or I want to make something different. On this journey, I'm the storyteller of the story that's being told. Something different is Jay Salter. He is embedded in bringing old school beats to life. Classic hip hop, going back to the late 80s. Yes, I said the late 80s, growing up to like Egyptian Lover and um, break dancing and all that stuff. You know, LL Cool J, uh, Run DMC. This is the music that I like the most. Piece by piece, he's built his own studio. Bar by bar, he tells his own story. This don't happen overnight. This definitely don't happen overnight. Music is his first love, though you might be familiar with his other life, where he moves the needle in a different way. This is my little baby. No, this is not my baby. This is. This is a monster. Telling his story from behind the viewfinder. I see things as well as hear things. And so for me, I kind of feel like um, the two go together. This photo, like his music, captures a moment in time. My photography is always inspired by album covers. It could be any type of covers. It all began when he borrowed his wife's camera. From there, I ended up getting a better one, a Sony, and got really into it more. But as life would have it, the opportunity to allow his passion to ignite was snuffed out. On a cold San Francisco day, Jace was robbed. All of his equipment, both for music and photography, gone. From there, so many people in the community really helped me. One of them was a woman who gave Jace her late husband's camera. This is a Leica M3 original in its leather casing. I've been using it since. And that's how I got into film photography was using Leica. 1.4, 50 mil. With that camera, his passions were reignited. I do it because it's something that I'm, I feel and I would just post it and people liked it. He documents the world around him. Streets of San Francisco. Both from the perspective of a lens and the beat of his own drum. Forgive me if I'm pleading. I'm screaming it out loud. I'm just a part of who I am and all the, the, the pains that I've gone through, the sufferings, all of the, the mistakes, the wrong decisions, all of the, the difficulties and struggles. That's a whole another interview. Today, he's released his first album, a culmination of work over the last decade. With some Gen X rappers and producers out here in Santa Clarita. It's called a documentary time because of that purpose. It's like I'm documenting all the time that I've spent in this and it goes back to, you know, 10, 12 years. The beginning of a story that has reached the iTunes chart. But it had like, you know, Lil Wayne and all those big guys, Jay-Z in front of me. I opened it up later that night, it was 55. I was like, wow. I was like, that's interesting. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool for a guy who finds himself in the lifeblood of two forms of art. If that's where God wanted it, then there's a reason for that. And maybe for me just to feel, you know, um, worthy of just even loving myself in life. In Santa Clarita, I'm Austin Dave. After the break, we turn things over to Anthony Riley for a deeper look at the local news from the Canyon's desk. 
Here's what's coming up next. We go to a local holiday event that brought a wonderland of holiday spirit. And next, a golf event where athletes got into the swing of things. Stay tuned. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? I heard my oldest son holler for mommy and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. Welcome back to Canyons News. I'm Anthony Riley. Let's take a look at the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. Starting with a look to the past, Santa Clarita Valley's history tracks deep. Let's take a ride around the historic Lang Station. This plot of land may look ordinary, but the history behind it is anything but. Lang Station had a huge impact on the railroad system in our state as well as our country. It really opened up traveling uh, by railroad to the rest of the country. So prior to the Southern Pacific Railroad being built, you had it was all stagecoaches. The importance of Lang Station could be represented by one artifact, the Golden Spike, which signified the completion of the Southern Pacific Railroad. So it was a solid golden spike that it was ceremonial only. Um, and so basically what they did was when they you know, met together, it was kind of like a big ceremony. So the Golden Spike, it, it, it was really kind of, it's kind of like, I guess you could say a relic for our history. Arguably the most important people to Lang Station, as well as the railroads, were the track layers who in their lifetime never got their due. Without the, tr the Chinese track layers, there wouldn't be a railroad, period. So I really, on, I would put them at the top of the list um, in terms of, you know, the, the people that are important to the contributions of the railroad here. With Lang Station gone, all that remains of this historic landmark are a couple reminders of the impact this station had on history. One plaque for that was put in 1976 by the Chinese Historical Society of Southern California that's on the other side of the road, probably covered up. Um, and then this one over here that is kind of beyond the gate here, that is a state plaque that was put in in 1957. For Canyons News, I'm Anthony Riley. The SCV Chamber of Commerce has an internal organization which hopes to empower women within our community. Canyons News reporter Xander Grable brings us a story about this local group. Influencer is an organization within the SCV Chamber of Commerce where women help women. The organization meets every few months to tackle topics of concern for women who are trying to make it in the world. So Influencer is a group in the Santa Clarita Chamber of Commerce that is women and we gather about six times a year and we have different speakers and business women within the community talk about what they do, life lessons, business lessons, a ton of education happens here, a ton of networking, but most importantly empowerment. Each event comes with a new topic of discussion to help women with various struggles they may be facing and on November 28th the organization met and had a panel of accomplished women who were there to discuss and answer questions about the chosen topic. So the main topic of this event today was, will I be okay? Which, you know, 
that could be for anything from fr a financial side to death, divorce, to accident, to disability, to um, knowing more about real estate and the financial situation in our personal homes. So we wanted to create a panel, you know, to help women understand and how to navigate, you know, the subjects that we don't really like to talk about on a daily basis. With the year coming to an end, Influencer has already set their sights on the new year in hopes to teach and empower more women in the Santa Clarita community and beyond. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Xander Grable. The Santa Clarita Public Library turns the page on a new chapter of their annual family literacy event. Canyons News reporter Natalie Perez checks it out. Checking out has never been more fun. The Santa Clarita Public Library hosted its annual family literacy event to engage the community to visit the local library and check out books. This is a great event that brings the community together for to celebrate literacy. We connect people to local vendors and local organizations that um, provide resources to our community that residents might not know about before the event. And we of course have fun things like live performances every year as well. The event featured an array of craft booths, and here comes singing, dancing, and of course, reading. Who had done it? He had conquered Earth. I think it's really important because it just brings everybody together. You get a sense of camaraderie within the, the people that live here and she gets to meet some friends and maybe uh, long term relationships can come from it and just building a stronger connection within everybody here in Santa Clarita. While children could check out their favorite books, they could also meet their favorite literary heroes in real life. My favorite part has definitely been all the kids, how excited they are to see us. A lot of them have said, I've read a book about you. Um, it's been really fun to be able to promote reading and also this galaxy that I love. The Santa Clarita Public Library offers a range of free services such as homework help and story times. Please visit your local branch for more information. For Canyons News, I'm Natalie Perez. A local brewery celebrated its eighth annual festival with a day of food and fun. Canyons News reporter Nareg Sharkadian tells us more. In the mood for some grub? Or some beer to fill up your cup? Pocock Brewing Company in Santa Clarita offered its local community both this past weekend during its annual beer festival. The 8th annual festival has been happening since the brewing company first opened and has benefited the local community through their support. The event's proceeds will go towards the Castaic and SCV Education Foundations. This year's event sold out, with guests and breweries coming from different parts of the greater Los Angeles area. Owner Todd Tisdell started the company 8 years ago with his brother and has had a great time with fellow breweries, inviting them over to his company in Santa Clarita. The company routinely holds trivia and bingo nights, so for them, getting the community together is nothing new. We really like those sort of uh, get a large group together community events. Uh, there's a great energy to them, just like this, you know, there's 400 people or so here, and there's a good energy here too. Everybody's, you know, good vibes and positive feelings, and it's always just a fun time. Pocock has expanded past just beer, adding gourmet pizzas to go with their brews. And with the second location coming, it's fair to say Pocock has found its stride. But have you ever wondered just how far a compliment really goes for a business owner? You make a product and you hand it to somebody and somebody says, yeah, that's delicious. That, that little, little bit of kudos, that little bit of attaboy, that's a really neat thing. It's, uh, it's, it's nice when people really enjoy the product that you make. A festival celebrating a company who gives to their community and gets some back as well. For Canyons News, I'm Narek Charchadian. Higher Vision Church kicked off the festive seasons with Santa Clarita's biggest holiday event. Canyons News reporter Shalisa Kurlpan is here to tell us more. Members of the Santa Clarita Valley had the chance to enjoy a two-day holiday event with Higher Vision Church. This past weekend, the church's annual Winter Wonderland event brought guests together for a night of holiday cheer and togetherness. Not only did the event bring joy to the community, but it also got families into the spirit of the holiday season. The holidays are about family and giving, and what better way to kind of join the two together with the church event, um, spend some quality time, kind of unplugged, and you know, meet some new people that come to this church and check it out. And, 
I don't know. The holidays are about both of those things, and I think that this event will definitely bring that feeling. At the Winter Wonderland event, guests were able to enjoy carnival rides, ice skating, food trucks, and even pictures with Santa. While the holidays are a time for fun festivities, for other guests, the holidays have a deeper meaning. The holidays, one, it's about family and love, but for us, most importantly, it's about Jesus and what he did for us. And so we're celebrating that he was born and coming together and sharing the love he taught us to. With members of the church attending for the fun, many of them are also still finding appreciation for the holidays. The year goes by so fast and this month is so special. It's his birthday. He's the reason we can do this. Um, man, you feel it in your heart and you get to share it with others. So I just, that is what Christmas is to me. Is It's his birthday. I mean, we have life. We have blessings all around us and people to share it with. And it just reminds me of all the little things we can do. So, yeah. For Canyons News, I'm Shalisa Curlpun. Ganey's news reporter Julianne Lena gives us a closer look at a winter boat parade that illuminated Castaic Lake. This past Saturday, members of the Santa Clarita Valley gathered at Castaic Lake to celebrate the season and watch a magical boat parade. At the Winter Magic Boat Parade, held by the Friends of Castaic Lake organization, the community came together to enjoy a variety of different booths and food trucks. Families and friends were able to indulge in the holiday spirit. Uh, well, tonight, uh, when it gets dark, we're going to have uh, boats um, that, uh, in the lake here. They're going to be all decorated like Christmas, and they're going to have a contest. And then they can win money, the people that are running the boats. From sliding down in sleds to activities such as face painting, this event showcased a sense of togetherness that defines the holiday season. Behind the scenes, the Friends of Castaic Lake is a group of dedicated volunteers that puts together events for everyone to enjoy, all while bringing in a positive impact to the community. The food pantries here and uh, people are um, donating food and then we're going to give it to the homeless and um, all kinds of good things like that and there's candy for the kids that people donate it. As the night unfolded, cheers and applause filled the air as the procession of glimmering boats floated by. For Canyons News, I'm Julie and Lena. For any fighter, the biggest challenge is on fight night. But for one fighter, his biggest challenge was pushing himself to find his passion. Canyons News reporter Jonathan Garcia takes a look at a local COC student. For some, Muay Thai is viewed as a violent hobby, but for others, it's a saving grace. Meet Muay Thai fighter and COC student Andres Sosa. During his childhood, Sosa was typically quiet, but always had a love for soccer and basketball. But his love for sports quickly shifted to Muay Thai after two and a half years of fighting in martial arts in which it helped him overcome some ups and downs as a young kid. With struggles many viewers at home have faced once in their life, bullying. As for Sosa, his experience was almost lethal. Um, when I was in middle school, that was when I started kind of getting like, almost like suicidal thoughts. When I was like in 12 years old. Um, and then from there I knew that there was like something wrong with me at that point. With the mental battles of dealing with bullying, just two years later, Sosa experienced the passing of his cousin at the age of 14. With so much conflict in his early ages, where could Sosa turn to for help? I did therapy and such, but it didn't really help me out because I just felt like they were just just listening and just kind of like not caring and just be like, oh, whatever, like, go out, like I prescribe you this and you just go away. Sosa then knew he had to continue fighting his own battle. And that's where Muay Thai saved him. The ability to learn how to build confidence, protection, and a new skill is a powerful punch. Sosa found himself while overcoming the passing of his cousin and the battle of bullying. What's next for Sosa? Sharing the message to maybe helping someone else's life. 
that's why I always kind of recommend it to people that were kind of like the way how I felt when it comes to like expressing themselves like do something that you know that can help you with it it doesn't mean you have to come and be this and be crazy like us and get punched and kick in the face you know just get out of your comfort zone and you know God knows you know maybe that maybe that's the thing that can save your life for Canyons News I'm Jonathan Garcia for golfers securing a spot on the PGA Tour is a dream Canyons News reporter Sam Rabati tees up an event that not only put players a swing closer to that goal, but just a short drive from COC. With a swing, the second stage of the PGA Tour qualifying school took place at the Valencia Country Club, where golfers battled to move one step closer to securing their PGA Tour card. This is their livelihood. This is everything. This is a, a culmination of, of 15, 20, 30 years for a lot of these guys who have been chasing a dream for forever. Um, and to come out here and, and to put their you know, blood, sweat, and tears on the line out here, it's, it's amazing to see. This wasn't just an opportunity for the players, but also the country club, which closed last April for six months in order to complete renovations. So we've come a long way. It's, it's, been, it's been awesome to, to see the, the advance, the improvement, and the growth of the course and you know, where it is and where it was. Only 13 golfers plus ties saw the fruit of their labor cement them a spot in the final stage of the PGA qualifying, which takes place in Florida on December 14th to the 17th. For Canyons News, I'm Sam Rabati. That does it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Anthony Riley. Remember, you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, canyonsnews underscore coc, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody.